Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Anthony Lusgree. We have Dennis and Dan. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Yeah, Dinner W6DQ out here in California. NK7REX out here in Idaho. Okay, I'm not sure how many people are out there listening in the world, but we're uh, just playing around with the streaming process here, so hopefully we'll get things straightened out. We are representing the Rat Pack Group, and uh, we're going to give you a little slideshow presentation in a few moments here on what Rat Pack is about. Uh, but we're still getting a couple of the bugs out of the system here, so hopefully that'll be okay. Oh, never a dull moment. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and I'm going to bring up our first slideshow here and I'm going to go ahead and play it. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. I'm going to go ahead and make it full size. And embed sound. Give me a thumbs up if you're hearing the sound when it starts up. Hello, welcome to the Rat Pack Lounge. Rat Pack. It's there, but it's low. Sources in this presentation. You can access them at tiny.cc slash ratpack2022 or by scanning the QR code. During the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, in Idaho, Section Manager Dan Mahler K7REX saw a need for a program to foster continued activity of amateur radio operators. Soon Rat Pack was born, including the cute mascot logo. Radio Amateur Training, Planning and Activities Committee comprises amateur radio operators of a wide variety of backgrounds and experiences. We host nationwide, twice a week, amateur radio Zoom presentations. As of September 2022, over 225 sessions have been presented. The topics are selected from audience recommendations and current trends in amateur radio. Wednesday sessions focus on general radio topics. Thursday sessions focus on amateur radio emergency communications. To keep up with new and recorded sessions, discuss topics with other interested hams, etc., we have a number of tools available to you. The first one group I.O. mailing list. The second one, online listings in the form of spreadsheets. We have a website, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We have three group I.O. mailing lists. Please feel free to join one or all of the mailing lists. The spreadsheet can be found at tiny.cc slash ratpack dash list. This spreadsheet listing gives you all the upcoming topics plus access to all recordings of previous topics. Our website is at www.ratpack.us. At Ratpack P, you can access our Twitter. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash ratpackfb, or you can scan the QR code on this slide. We also have a YouTube channel, and you can search for Ratpack and get our channel. Zoom links to watch the upcoming presentations live are available in the list. The sessions start at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and 6 p.m. Pacific Time. That is 10100 UTC. The Zoom link is available in this slide. The password is Wednesday. The Zoom link for Thursday is also available and the password is Thursday. Again, you can access all the materials in this presentation at tiny.cc slash ratpack2022 or by scanning the QR code. Please feel free to mingle and chat with other members of the Rat Pack group in our lounge. I hope you're enjoying the Welcome everyone this evening. As uh Frank pointed out in the chat, the joys of being the first presentation of the evening are always fun. Uh, we're gonna sh I'm going to keep the shared screen up here for a little while. Tiny.cc slash Rat Pack 
2022 or you can scan the qr code there actually we need to move ourselves on the other side so you can so we can scan the qr code and that'll let you scan the qr code that'll get you to this presentation tonight that has all the links also our our rat pack web page at www.ratpac.us is our website where everything is available we are on the website and other places we have lists uh, in the form of spreadsheets that have all of our links for sessions, both upcoming and previous. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up on the screen here in a second. And you'll check back to the lounge often. Yeah, I've noticed, noticed a couple of comments. In, in, oh, there's that echo again. Couple of comments, comments in the chat about the audio about level, the audio level, the video. video. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 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 way down, it's way and, down we, and we were able to get the audio level up. Level up. Yeah, I had I had the audio cranked all the way up, so I'm not sure what was going on. But let me just show everyone this link. Uh, it's a tiny.cc slash rat pack dash list. This is a uh, spreadsheet that has multiple tabs on it. Uh, from this spreadsheet, you can find any of the sessions that are upcoming or you can go back through any of the recorded sessions. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up so you can see it as the list as it normally would be. At the top, you can change for by date, by topic, by presenter, by category, and those are all available. As you see, uh, the dates in red are upcoming dates, and you can click on those links to open up the, the Zoom presentation on that date. At uh, Again, the time is 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and you can uh, figure out what other time zones you have. Of course, the the 0100 UTC will change when the time zones, when we have our time change here in the U.S., so that's currently the time. You can also visit any of our previous sessions. You notice here, for example, uh, last night, Marty Wool, N6VI, did a session on personal radio services for public use. From here, you can click on the YouTube video to watch a vi video recording of the session from last <laughs> night. You can go to the documents link. If the presenter has a, a PowerPoint or other slideshow, uh, we put it there. We also do a capture of the chat from that session and put it in the documents. If you prefer to watch the video via Vimeo, you can click on the Vimeo link. And if you wanna download a copy of the Vimeo presentation, you can do that from the download video link on there. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. There we go. <coughs> and as you can see, we're in the 220. We had two, the 228th session last night. And these are all available, or the vast majority of them are available to watch as recorded videos uh, if you're interested. <coughs> We need a snooze but we need a sneeze button on uh, restream just like we need on zoom so i'm going to let dan go ahead and talk just a little bit here i'm going to give him a chance to catch his breath there and uh, dan is our uh, founder and uh, the head of rad pack so i'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share and go ahead dan take it away well i don't know if you want to call me the head of a rat pack i certainly found, uh, found it and uh, got a lot of good things going but I have to hand it to the team we have. We have a, a, a team that we put together. Uh, we had to adjust a few, a few times, but finally we got the right people in there and they're doing an outstanding job. You couldn't ask for a better bunch. We have a lot of fun. And the uh, uh, primary mission is to take care of your needs, uh, what's, what you would like to see. And so we look forward to hearing from you. We need to hear from you to make sure we're giving you the right content and uh, what we're wanting to do there. Uh, you're looking at uh, Anthony and Dennis, which is two of just two of our uh, Rat Pack uh, team members. We have a whole slew of them, and like I say, I can't say enough good about them. Um, Dennis, uh, do you have something you want to say? And this is frozen there, it appears. Trying to unmute my yeah, microphone. Good. There it is. See if I'm getting an echo still. Uh, if some, if we're, here, we're not hearing an echo, but if anyone is hearing an echo, let us know in the chat, and we'll try and uh, deal with that situation. 
Well, my only, you know, I have a couple of comments. One is that I have thoroughly enjoyed being part of the planning committee of uh, Rat Pack. This has been an amazing experience. And it, like, like uh, Dan said, this is a great group of people. We always have a lot of fun with what we do, and we get some amazing, amazing speakers on uh, on Rat Pack. And if you haven't seen us yet, be sure to do it. Because we try to cover a myriad of topics, uh, just anything you can imagine as as they, they said uh, as the other said uh thursday being uh, mcom but uh wednesday's just generous topic that covered just about anything you can imagine on uh, on hamio and if there's some topics you see on there or you don't see on there there we have the ability to have you suggest uh topics for future which is something i would suggest people take take advantage of you know, we're always looking for new subjects, and there's probably plenty out there that we haven't thought of. So uh, we would uh, certainly appreciate input from others. If you go to our <laughs> website, which is ratpack.us, uh, there's a link on the, this purple button that says uh, speaker and topic suggestion form. If you click on that, it'll open up a Google form where you can put in uh, your information and then either suggest a topic for a presentation volunteer to do a presentation yourself or suggest a speaker for a presentation and uh, we will uh, get back to you or get back to whoever's you suggest as a presenter and we will go ahead and uh, take that into consideration so that's how we get a number of our ideas on speakers so if you know of someone you'd like to hear or if you're a speaker yourself and you'd like to volunteer to do a, a presentation or you just have a topic you're interested in we'll try and track down a good speaker on that topic so uh, please feel free again the website is ratpack.us. Well, it looks like we lost Dennis for some reason. He went away. Well, he's going to another computer to try and get rid of the echo. Oh, I see. Okay, sounds good. Well, I finally figured out how to mute myself and uh, close down my screen so I can sneeze and Go through all those those uh, bits. That's a problem. I'm sneezing tonight too, so uh, we may have a little bit of that going on. <laughs> we can get <laughs> one. Have a little beat thing going, you know. <laughs> so as as we mentioned before, we have a number of recordings. So what we're going to do tonight is play you some snippets uh, from a recent uh, set of videos that we did uh, on getting started with VHF and UHF. And Dan, I thought. We had a way to send chats out to the audience, but I don't see how to do that here. I just see our internal chat. So uh, I will put the screen, the link up on the screen and we will see it that way, I guess. So this is our uh, YouTube channel, and again, we have playlists for a number of different topics. So when you click on the playlist, uh, you can go in. We have information on uh, software, amateur radio nets, ham humor, VHF, UHF, microwaves, antennas, new hams, events, a lot of stuff on emergencies, a lot of stuff on training. Uh, so you can go through this whole list here and get information. The series we just did recently is called VHF uh, UHF Beginner's Guide. And uh, Marty and my uh, Marty and six VI and myself did this. It's a three week series, and the slides are available. Uh, I'll show you the link to the slides here in a minute, and you can watch the videos online. But just want to give you a little bit of an idea of what a typical session sounds like and uh, how it works. So I'll play a few minutes of this and then we'll snip back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, restart the screen share with the sound enabled this time. And I'm going to turn up the volume here. Tonight, week three of the Beginner's Guide to VHF and UHF. I'm Anthony Luskery, K8ZT. And I'm Marty Wall, N6 Victor, India. This is my contact information. Here's Marty's contact information. And the slideshow is at tiny.cc slash BGVHF, Beginner VHF. Uh, tonight's topics, we're going to talk about where you can where you can talk to with your VHF UHF, two meter simplex, 
uh, some single sideband VHF UHF, uh, satellites, a repeater crawl, six meters, 220 UHF and microwaves, uh, VHF UHF uh, <coughs> rover installation, uh, VHF UHF contesting, and contest roving. So first of all, where can you talk with your VHF UHF? Well, I've broken it down into three categories based on what mode you're using or what propagation uh, uh, feature you're taking advantage of. Local contacts can be made with Local FM contact. simplex on VHF or UHF um, and with repeaters. These are pretty much line of sight uh, type of contacts on these. Regional contacts can be made by uh, linking various repeaters together so they cover wider regions. Using single sideband and or FT8 on VHF, six meters and two meters, so-called weak signal modes, also CW, will increase your distances somewhat. Uh, for long distance contacts on six meters, it acts a lot like HF at sometimes with sunspot F2 activity ionizing the layer and producing uh, worldwide propagation at times. Unfortunately, we don't always have good sunspot activity, but even when we don't, we get sporadic E. This is the E layer that's ionized, and we don't really know exactly why it happens or when it's going to happen very well, but it can provide regional and sometimes uh, even long distance uh, communications on six meters. Hence the name Magic Band, because these sporadic E can pop up and you can all of a sudden go from contact across town to someone in the Caribbean. On the VHF UHF bands, there's a number of what I'll refer to as EPPs, enhanced propagation phenomena. These include tropospheric ducting. These are when you hear about the contacts between Hawaii and, and California on VHF UHF bands, a meteor scatter, aurora, transequatorial TEP, also it's abbreviated, something called aircraft enhancement. Uh, another form of bouncing things off would be bouncing them off the moon with EME, Earth, Moon, Earth. Also, we can utilize satellites, or we can use internet backbone VHF, UHF, your simplex range. Many local clubs and organizations hold two meter FM simplex contests on a regular basis. Often they're grid square based uh, because that allows you to tell uh, pretty much how far you're contacting. And I have some videos here on FM simplex. The FM simplex frequency to monitor is 146.520. I just turned mine off so it won't be on in the background here. Uh, FM simplex, you would just say, okay, I'll just turn my radio on. I'm not going to pick a repeater frequency. I'll just pick a random frequency. Well, don't do that. Use one of the suggested frequencies, and the suggestions vary by the part of the country you're in. If you're in the east, you're going to want to use the yellow uh, chart. If you're in the, the far west, with the exception of California, you're going to want to use the purple chart. If you're in Alabama, uh, Alaska, other places, you're going to have to check on your local conditions because they're different. But basically, the yellow is 15 kilohertz uh, channelization and or spacing, and the, the purple is 20. There are some frequencies that are shared by both groups. So if you look at this 146.40, 146.40. And again, these are not the repeater inputs or outputs, so you won't be interfering with repeaters. And especially don't go down to the bottom of the band where there's weak signal activity going on. You should not be using FM below uh, the 146.40 uh, area. In addition to uh, single six meters single sideband, you can also do single sideband on VHF and UHF bands, two meters, 440, etc. It's mainly used for weak signal work, contesting, and for some satellites, the so-called linear transponder satellites use your two meter FM antenna. You might not get quite as good as results as you're expecting. License was able to operate on the satellites. There are five bases, I'm going to say six types of satellites. I left one off the list here. I keep leaving it off. Uh, low Earth orbit uh, satellites that are FM based. These are probably the easiest satellites to use, and I'll talk more about those in a few minutes. Low Earth orbit linear transponder satellites. These are ones that use single sideband and CW. High Earth orbit linear transponders. This is what I cut my teeth on Oscar 10, for example, in a high elliptical orbit. Unfortunately, there are no high elliptical orbit satellites available currently for amateurs. Uh, geosynchronous orbits, and a satellite that stays in the same place, you don't have to track it, you know where it's approximately going to be. Um, there are none in the Western Hemisphere. The only uh, geosynchronous satellite is in AIRU -A Region 1. That's Europe and Africa. 
uh, so we don't have a geosynchronous satellite in our area. And of course, the space station at sometimes is turned on as a digirepeater, so it acts very similar to a satellite. Low Earth orbit FM satellites are of local repeaters in a specified order, like a prob crawl. With a live online log, uh, they use NetLogger, which is really good because everyone can see that on their computer and know who else is on the, the repeater crawl with them. AMS are encouraged to try new repeaters, program repeaters into the radio memories, uh, set the proper PL uh, encode and decode tones, and test to see whether they can actually hit different repeaters that they might not have even known were in their area. And this is a great way to see what repeaters can be accessed from your location or if you're mobile, what repeaters you can bring up. In addition to 2 meters and 440, you could also include, but for example, I'm EN91, but in some cases we'll use the six character grid square, which digs down even closer so you can tell exactly where in the grid you're at. So I am EN91HE, and I have a whole uh, article that I wrote for our local newsletter on finding your grid square and finding other hams in your area. Now, the finding other hams in your area was not has nothing to do with the grid squares, but it's which you end up finding when you use the grid square method. So it talks about the grid square, what grid squares are, how they work, uh, the designator. So this is what I was talking about, the first two characters, the second two numbers, and the next two characters are what are you typically used uh, to give you a good idea of where you're at. On a this this is formerly known as the uh, Maidenhead yes. grid locator system. And the entire world is, is divided up into fields like DM and EM and EL and so on. And then from there, into uh, into uh, 24 uh, 24 segments uh, vertically and uh, the 12 horizontally and then from there it's all or and then from there into uh, into you know smaller and smaller units so it's it's uh, we say grid squares as, as a you know but it's really grid locators and uh, typically four characters as Anthony says in the VHF contest in the microwave contest, Often they're scored based on distance, so you use uh, six characters. For example, I'm in Delta Mike 04, but that covers a lot of Southern California. But uh, Delta Mike 04, Quebec, Germany, describes just a few, uh, you know, a fraction of a mile in either direction of me. And uh, on the basis of that, we can calculate uh, the distance from one to another and therefore the number of points you learn just call them the calling frequency you need to spread out a little bit so typically most of the six meter single sideband activity during a contest of course will take place between 50.125 and 50.250 the area from 50.1 to 50.125 is considered a dx window so you don't typically as a u.s station call in that area that's reserved for dx stations to call prevent other people from making Biggest differences from HF contesting on VHF, UHF contesting, probably the number one thing is QSYing. After working a station on one band, you often hear a request for the, from the station you're talking to asking you what other bands you have and do you want a QSY. Typically, QSYing starts at the lowest band and works its way up. But if you're making a contact on 430, uh, you might say you'll start on 6 and then work your way back up again if you have all of these bands. It depends what bands you have. So if I work someone on six, they might say, do you have two meters? And we'll agree on a frequency and we'll both jump up there and make a contact. And he'll say, do you have 220? I'll say, no. He said, okay, let's go up to 432.1. I'll go up there and work from there. He'll say, do you have 1.2 gigahertz? I'll say, no. And he'll say, oh, thank you for the contacts. And then he'll move on to call someone else. So QSYing is a very popular way to increase the number of contacts you have and increase the bands that you're working during a VHF, UH count contest something that typically doesn't happen in hf con all right uh anthony shall i take it from here yeah go ahead okay um you're wondering we've been talking a lot about contesting why why should you even care why should you even do that uh the first answer is it's a lot of fun uh generally during a contest you will have a lot more activity on the bands than you will on a typical weekday or even a weekend uh, you'll get the rag chewing going on on local repeaters and maybe some simplex frequencies, but there are lots of folks out there who are uh, who activate their stations and and or uh, get up to a higher location, maybe a mountaintop, or are roving among different locations. Uh, there are awards that you can get for uh, working uh, certain numbers of grid locators in diff on different bands. Uh, I happen to have the, the, the endorsed VUCC awards on 2, 3, 5, and 10 gigahertz um, 
uh, just from my uh, roving activities and some of the mountaintop activities. Um, it's good copy practice. Uh, you know, we encourage well, whether you're in uh, uh, whether you're in the emergency communication side of things or not. It's really a good idea to build your ability to uh, hear and copy down things that are unfamiliar, uh, call signs that not the same ones you hear on the net every week, grid locators, and so on. So it's good practice uh, to uh, go from your ear down to either your, your uh, paper log or to the computer log that you're going to be using. Uh, if you are chasing awards, uh, just like on HF, uh, contests are a great way to work some of those locations that may not be active during the normal uh, non-contest times uh, or yeah, either because the people aren't on or because there's nobody in there. Out here in the West, particularly, we have grid locators that have almost no stations in them unless somebody goes there and activates it, uh, not so much so in the uh, Northeast. Um, it al contesting allows you to evaluate your station's performance. Uh, if, uh, if you find other people around you are working a certain person and you're not, maybe that says something about your setup. Uh, also, if you make changes from uh, one uh, contest period to the next one, you can evaluate, hey, you know, last time I did this, I couldn't work San Diego on 1.2 gigahertz. Now I can. Okay, so you can tell whether that uh, your station is more effective and how evaluate those changes. Uh, you will experience, particularly on 6... Uh, Soda and POTUS, Summit's on the air, Park's on the air, uh, K0NR has information on VHF, UHF, SODAs, uh, MCOM activities, there's tons of Rat Pack sessions on, from Thursday nights on uh, MCOM activities with VHF, UHF, same thing with VAR, FM, again, Thursday night presentations, we'll talk about Echo Link a little later. Uh, fox hunting. Hopefully a future Rat Pack presentation. I don't think we've done one on fox hunting, but fox hunting is direction hunting where someone goes out and hides a, a UHF uh, or VHF radio and then people track it down. Uh, Earth, Moon, Earth uh, Bounce. Uh, there's a Rat Pack presentation on that you can watch. So let's dig in a little deeper into just a few of these. DMR, D-Star, Infusion, uh, also called YSF or CF4M. I'm sorry, C4FM on it called Technician's Life Beyond Repeaters. Now some of the bits duplicated in the sessions that Marty and I have been doing over the last couple of weeks, but it's a very good idea for a number of things you can do. For all these things we've been talking about through the last three weeks, you might say, well, that's a really good idea. I wish I knew more about it. One of the things we really strongly suggest is that you get a mentor. That's someone that can help you answer questions and avoid I do apologize for the for the low volume and for jumping around, but we just want to give you an idea of what's out there on the website and uh, let you go get a chance to go back and look at these sessions in detail. And I just did get a correction in the chat here from Dennis. There was a presentation on fox hunting. So there is a presentation in the list on fox hunting. Let's take a quick uh, look at something else we do. Um, in addition to uh, all the very serious topics we do, sometimes we do things for fun. So um, I'm going to go back here to a session that we did um, right before April Fool's. Uh, we did one last year, uh, an April Fool's program, which was a big hit. So we decided to do another one this year. But we wanted to do something a little bit different. So this year, um, Anthony, if I can interject. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, we're still getting, we're still getting that. Uh, uh, Bob, uh, uh, was asking about, asking about why your video, video was the video feed was uh, jumping jump ahead because you're actually, you're, actually you're, 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 you're trying to pick up, pick up little tidbits from the young uh, uh, link, link. Right, right. Hopefully that answers. That answer. Anthony, I'm not, we're not hearing you now. Thank you. Uh, we did a session uh, this last year uh, before April Fool's, and it was two days before April Fool's, so it's actually uh, April Fool's uh, square, pre-squared, and it was called, let me get back to the beginning here, it was called the MacGyver Day Sessions, and we talked a lot about uh, 
some fun things, but also some serious things at work. So let's just take a couple snippets. Again, I'm going to jump around, and I do apologize for the low volume, but you, you're welcome to come back and watch all of these uh, in their full time. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night's presentation. Uh, tonight is the MacGyver Day session. It's uh, April Fool's Eve Eve. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the nonsense that may go on, just like last year, we're going to do a Rat Pack Committee group presentation. I'm Anthony KZT, and I'll be handling the slideshow, but we'll be having a number of people speak up for the slideshow today. And tonight, it's featuring Oscar MacGyver himself, KP4RF. You might recognize the face if you look around the screen there. And you can find all this... Uh, information at tiny.cc slash fools dash eve uh, for the links in the presentation tonight and Dan will make all that available on the website. Disclaimer tonight's program although primarily being presented by one person is a joint effort of many. And what group could possibly even be more MacGyvery than hams? We even call our spare parts reserve a junk box. So first of all, we're going to go through some a shopping list of some items you might want to add to your MacGyver kit. Uh, duct tape, Swiss Army knife, and I definitely suggest you get the one that has the pliers. And there's a couple models that have pliers, can be very invaluable in the field. Paper clips, the large size seems to be best. Aluminum uh, foil, plastic wrap, drinking straws, chewing gum. And gaffer's tape has been suggested. It's used in the film, TV, stage production. The stuff is more expensive than duct tape, but it is so much better and stickier. Empty pill bottles. And if you still have them around, 35 millimeter film canisters. I still have a bunch of them in my junk box ready to be used for projects. A butane soldering iron can be very helpful in the field. Ziploc bags have numerous numbers of uses. A flashlight is always handy to have, and a Timex camper watch. I guess I have mine off right now, but it's here on the counter. Uh, mine has the built-in compass, which is very helpful. Strike anywhere matches are always useful. Steel wool, shoestrings, candles, and moldable, moldable glue can be very helpful. So let's get into our first MacGyver project, and uh, this is DIN, Mini, DIN, Molex, or any kind of plug that you might have. These plugs always drove me crazy. Not only do they have multiple arrangements of pins, but they have different numbers of pins and they're different sizes. Although they're shown all the same size here, there's different diameters. And you never seem to have the one you need. So I came up with a quick way to make temporary, which in MacGyverism means probably for the rest of the time I'll be using the equipment, by using two things I could find very easily around the house a standard wine bottle cork and a thick uh, paper clip. Although in some cases you might need to use the thinner ones depending on the size of the pins that you're replacing. Alligator clips can then be used for temporary connections or you can get really efficient and solder onto the paper clips themselves. Cut the cork into a half an inch to three quarter inch disc. Unbend the paper clips on one end Create a paper template of the holes in the socket and line it up on top of the cork. Then push straight the straight end of the paper clips through the cork in the proper pattern using the template. Attach alligator clips to bend the ends of the paper clip. Press the cork down on the table so it makes all the pins the same depth and insert into your device to utilize it. Now I'm going to go over to Dennis because Dennis has this variation on the cork uh, uh, trick. Dennis, take it away. Oh, yeah. Okay, Anthony. Thank you. Yeah, anybody who's ever played with R390s and R390As and any of the receivers like that, the military that have the twin axe connector, know the problem of trying to connect up to that uh, twin axe um, uh, antenna connector. You know, you're tempted to use that single-ended coax connector that's right next to it. The problem is that the signal level is way, way down when you use that. There's, a, there's an input stage that gets bypassed. So... I've been doing this since the mid seventies <laughs> for R390s and R398s that I've had is I just take a couple of like 22 uh, AWG wire, strip it, bend the end over and shove it right in the connector. 
and uh, I've got radios that have had that set up for years and years and years. But I like the cork, Anthony. That's really cool. And of course, I added a ballon to get the balance to feed from the uh, from the uh... homebrew something. Quite often, I need a I need a case right now, and I could spend a lot of time and money on a case, but it's just they're so expensive. And I don't have a 3D printer, so I keep look on the lookout for items going into the trash around the house that can be used for cases. Food packaging, uh, plastic bottles, pill bottles, mint tins. Well, we all know about the Altoids and the obsessive QRPers with the radios in their Altoid tins. Uh, tea tins, plastic storage boxes, uh, g- generically, generically uh, known as Tupperware. And in the olden days, 35 millimeter film canisters were great, especially for inline adapters. I could put a uh, quarter inch plug or an eighth inch plug on one side and run a cable out the other end with a plug on it and make nice little adapters that way. So here's an example of a project that I wanted to put together when I got my KX3. I wanted to put together a small interface so I could do both radio control and key the radio using uh, N1MM software. And I use a circuit that I've used many times before using an opto isolator, a resistor, and a diode. Uh, in this case, it was a serial output, and then I used a USB to serial adapter. So I had everything built, all ready to go, but I had no case, and I wanted to use it immediately. So here's my case. You can notice the uh, serial port on the one side and the two wires coming on the other side. And if you're of Italian heritage, you can probably even guess what month of the year I was building this. For those of you that aren't Italian, this is something called Tyrone, and it's a candy that is eaten with nougat and almonds in it and a, a wife, wafer on both sides of it. It's always around during the Christmas season. So this was obviously my December project, and I used this small little box. And my wife says that we have plenty of boxes around. I should replace this one because it's gotten crunched a little bit over time. Being on my feet when I operated in a contest in Puerto Rico that I'm sure would have licked the terminals on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we were in Jamaica, and I was using somebody else's rig on 160, uh, and I was getting reports of uh, bad audio feed, you know, RF feedback on the audio line. So we went into the kitchen and uh, basically got enough foil to wrap most of the uh, mic cord uh, heading into the uh, heading into the radio's uh, mic front panel mic connector, I got some rubber bands to tighten it up and and uh, clamp it around the uh, the threads of the mic connector, and that solved the problem. And we continued on. Marty and Dennis, uh, th- those are great experience to solve problems. But let's say we have a coax and a dog comes and bite it and cut it in two or somebody cut the cable, the coax, or you need to connect a RJA with a RG58. It happens to be that you don't have the right PLs and right connectors. What do you do? You go home? No. Actually, you do, you put it back side by side and you, you tie up the shield and you can tie up also the, uh, the actual. And if you do it well, it's, they're going to be properly insulated, and this for HF, even BHF, and UHF, it will work well. The interesting part is you measure the losses by making this connection with uh, twist nuts, and or you, if you want to be more professional, you can you can weld it and you can put a shrinking tube. But this is something that you can do in five minutes and get it on the air. So you can see what you're going to do on the left uh, the handwriting uh, diagram, and actually. This was done today, and it works. And and if you go to the next uh, slide, you see how the right way of doing it with PL, if you know how to do a PL, many people doesn't know how to do a PL, and you can do it this way with the uh, high knots and get it with the proper insertion loss. And as you can see in 40 meters, you can see that the antenna is the uh, having a good standing wave ratio at different frequencies, 7.025 and 7. 0.091 or 7.270, and you can get the right uh, working, and you put together two coax without PLs or without connectors. Next slide. Now, how you make this permanent? And we have uh, actually I made a wind link contact, and that was done today in 40 meters, no problem. And the other side without coax, using the power extension. You can see the same connection on the other side, hook it 
on the ground and, and then on the center and beautiful, get the power into the antenna. So believe it or not, if you get in a situation and you have no quark, you probably drop the ball and say, okay, I'm lost. But think about it. There are resources that you can use. You can use twinlet, uh, telephone line, anything with two lines that you have and put it to work. By the way, the impedance is about 100 ohms. So in, in 40, 80, 20 meters, it will work beautiful. So don't, don't, don't drop, I mean, keep working and get things, on, get on the air. Next slide. And well, in the true nature of a frugal ham, you notice that Oscar is not destroyed his extension cord, so he can use it later for electricity too. So I love that fact that you didn't just cut the ends off, but you actually just used it as is. So, Oscar, what is the ahead. insertion loss of a pair of PL connectors? Point, point, uh, 0 0.5, the same the okay. same one as we were having uh, on the same example with the twisted uh, nuts. It's the okay, same thanks. insertion loss. Okay, thank you. And uh, I work stations while I was waiting for my conference in, in Albuquerque that Sunday afternoon in the uh, contest. And the result, I received a certificate for the June uh, 2011 BHF contest. And you notice single operator portable first place New Mexico section. So that's a little bit of our uh, last uh, April Fool's uh, presentation on MacGyver things. And seeing uh, Oscar's uh, extension cord for the, for the multiple time here, I'm reminded of the time, many times I, that's been the problem. I've gotten somewhere and I do have coax with me, but it's not long enough. So uh, not having to destroy the power cord, just hooking it up and uh, making do was a fun thing. So we will go ahead and uh, take a little break from some of the recordings here. I'll go ahead and shut my screen share. I'll let Dennis and Dan talk. And I'm probably still echoing. Well, you do. You do echo. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. Well, well, I did switch to a different computer, and I'm in a different location in the ham shack, and uh, at least my video is a little bit smoother now than it was on the other computer, so I'm happy to see that. But, uh, wow, that that uh, clip of <laughs> Oscar with the with the uh, the power cord and the and the uh, the the uh, wire nuts tying coax together. That is one of my favorites of all time from Rat Pack. I, that just makes me laugh every time I see it, and it's amazing that that actually works. That's just an incredible, incredible. Uh, he lived up to his reputation of Oscar MacGyver. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. If we have any questions or comments from the group, feel free to put uh, them in the chat. Yeah, we, we don't have a very good balanced audio between the three of us here. And uh, we even practiced a little bit earlier today, but we didn't practice the audio aspect of things. We practiced all the video things. So if we would have practiced audio, the video wouldn't have worked right now. Yeah, yeah probably true. <laughs> Well, we don't just do funny things. We do very serious things. And quite a bit of our presentations are uh, focused on amateur radio emergency communications, a whole different variety. And recently, we've been doing some sessions getting ready for set. And we've been doing some sessions getting ready for uh, a variety of things. So every Thursday evening, for the most part, we go through and we cover emergency communication. You can see some of the topics. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here again. So you can see this last week we had the Florida SET cyber attack uh, sim simulation preview. Uh, we had the Great California Shakeout the week before that. Uh, we did have a break in August with no emergency communications. Um, very interesting talk uh, on a Wednesday night from Bruce Horn on WA7BNM on the contest calendar that he does and also on the 3830 Score Rumors website that he also runs. Uh, we had uh, Operation High Water. Uh, we had MCOM Ask Every Anything You Want panel with six people one night. Uh, MCOM for large public service activities. Uh, Marty did a series uh, 
back on June 14th on FRS and GMRS uh, radios. I'm not, and uh, I'm not sure where we're getting the echo from right now. Let me kill that one audio. Okay. Um, I'm not so, uh, yeah, I think it was me that time. Um, but he did a session on FRS and GMRS, which proved to be very popular after the session. It was watched a lot on YouTube. So he turned around and did another session for us this week, uh, just Wednesday, uh, Thursday night on personal radio services. And he did the other services. He bypassed mirrors, CB, and FRS he covered. And again, a very informative session on using different uh, public license, personal radio services for public service. <laughs> That was your your audio's echoing Dennis right now again. I'm not sure why. And my crossing. audio does not echo, right? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Uh, Dennis is growling there for a few seconds at me. So we do the, we do do things uh on uh serious topics in addition and again we we do recommend if you have a topic you'd like to have us cover uh go to the website uh the ratpack.us and from there you can easily click on the link that says rat pack form suggestions also on the website there's links to the three mailing groups we have and the thing that uh when dan started these group io mailing list it was a way to pass out information about rat pack but it's also a way for people to have discussions and quite often there's uh very vigorous discussion in the MCOM group about different topics having to do with MCOM that don't even have anything to do with the Rat Pack session that's going on. Uh, so please feel free to join any or all three of these group IOs and you'll get emails of information. Uh, on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to Rat Pack. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, we also have information here on uh, different other lists that you might want to subscribe to from the AWRL. They have their mailing lists that are very helpful. We, we recently got on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. So we just started on Facebook. If you've not been there yet, you can either shoot the QR code or go to at Rat Pack uh, FB for uh, Facebook and uh, follow us on Facebook. These are the links for the Zoom sessions. <coughs> Excuse me. And also on the webpage, we do have the embedded version. Uh, the session that's highlighted right here talks about ham line, online resources. And we did this at the peak of COVID uh, in winter of 2021. And we talked a little bit about um, reusing our resources. And you're more than happy. We're more than happy for you to play a recording of any of our sessions for your local club or contact us. And we might be even be able to do a session for you. But all these recorded Rat Pack videos are available to be shown in public at your local meetings or as training for a small group. So please feel free to utilize those items. Uh, they're, they're out there for you. Dan, Dennis, would you like to talk a little bit? I'm afraid to. Yes, but see if you can back the volume down maybe just a little bit. Try it now. Nope, nothing now. You're muted. Video earlier today. So um, I've got my audio turned down all the way here. Is it still echoing? No, it seems to be a little bit better. Interesting. But yeah, somebody commented it's because I don't have headphones on. Well, I do this all the time without headphones, and I've never had a, never really had a problem like this with the other streaming platforms. Yeah. So. We do this so often, it's very embarrassing when we have an issue like this. Uh, you know, we do this a couple hundred times. I've personally done over 200 presentations, not just for Rat Pack, but for other groups. And uh, so we've been doing this a lot over the last couple of years. So whenever we do have glitches like this, don't worry. We're, we're just as upset about you if the sound isn't isn't good. Yeah, that's great. Any words of wisdom? <laughs> Our fearless leader. I'm reading, I'm reading all the comments here. Yeah, I appreciate that comment. That's good. Yeah, I appreciate it. 
Good yeah, comments, please, feel free, please put free feel free to put uh comments in there for those of you that might have came in a little bit late we'll play the short uh three minute video again that just gives you the general introduction to rat pack uh at the top of the hour so uh hang around for that if you did not hear that if there's anything <laughs> questions you'd like to ask us uh there's a question about doing cw on zoom um <laughs> there's a very good uh, some very good information from the um CW Ops Group because they teach the CW Academy using Zoom, and there's a lot of things you can do to improve uh, the sound because CW uh, Zoom wants to try and cancel out Zoom. So if you are using Zoom on, for CW, take a look at the CW Ops information that they have on their website because they did a lot of research into this. What you need to turn on and turn off to uh, improve your uh, your audio. And by the way, we had an interview with the uh, people from CW Ops uh, about a year and a half ago. And we also had an interview with the people from Long Island CW Group. So if you're interested in learning CW, take go back and look at each of those sessions that we did on CW. No, and, sure. uh, just... Long, Island, Long Island CW Club is amazing, the things that they're doing. That's a, that's quite an organization. Yeah. So the CW Ops Academy was on December 29th, and the uh, Long Island CW Group was on December 22nd, both of 2021. So those are two good interviews that you can go back and take a look at. Anthony, do you know the answer to the Douglas's question there about the uh, Long Island CW Club? Okay. The the they're, they're, they work differently. The first, let's talk about the CW Ops Group, the CW Academy. That is free but you do need to sign up and they often get their classes filled and they start classes three times a year. So they're on a schedule. The CW ops groups works a little bit different. I'm sorry, the Long Island CW group works a little bit different. You need to join their club unless you're 18 or under and they have a free membership for 18 and under. I think it's $30 a year and $90 for a lifetime membership. But the uh, Long Island CW club not only does CW lessons and they do them in a new format that's called carousel which means you can jump in at any point because they teach it a certain number of letters each week but they keep building over time in this circular format so you can jump in anytime you want but in addition to that they have almost 75 sessions total every week everything from a boat anchor group to a technical topics group uh they have a, th a 3d printing group they have a uh satellite communications group i actually do a session on tuesday nights for the long island group called the joy of operating where i cover different topics uh, about operating getting on the air uh it is based in long island new york, new york but it's worldwide they have almost three thousand members um and again just to give you an idea of how this works if you're interested and you go to the slideshow presentation you can go to the documents and from the documents section you can get the download the chat and you can also download the presentation that was there for the organization. Uh, so here's the Long Island group. And when this was done December, they had 2,100 members in 50 states, 32 countries, and they were doing 75 classes a week. So this is you know, just a sample weekly lesson here. I was, I was going to say, uh, Anthony, on the topic of CW, we had, um, I can't remember what it was. It was a while back, but you, anybody who's interested in CW should check out uh, one of our Rat Pack. It was in history. I'm sorry. The historic. Yeah. We history. did American Morse Code and right. the history of telegraphy. Yeah, uh, both of those were 2021, yeah, September 21. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There you got the date. Yeah, I, was, I couldn't remember the date, but that's Ken Miller, K6CTW. And some of you may know him from uh, a little stint they did on the Jay Leno show some years ago. That Ken and uh, and Chip Margelli. Uh, were competing against a couple of kids using uh, SMS texting, not with us. This is pre smartphone days, so they're using the old style like flip phones. And uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was really something. But yeah, Ken, Ken came on and did a great presentation on uh, history of Morse code, which was, which was awesome. And the American Morse code society is interesting. Those guys, the American Morse code is very different from what we use is the, what is called the continental code. In, uh, in amateur radio. And it's what was used on the landlines back in the 1800s. And these guys in the American uh, Morse Society, they actually use uh, telephone with a modem and 
sounder code. In other words, they're using American Morse code over the telephone lines. So uh, I love that. That's a neat. That's a neat thing. So another history thing we did is uh, Mike Ritz W7VO came on and did the story history of the ham radio call sign. And then the following week, I did a follow-up topic on choosing your ideal call sign. So we had back-to-back -back, uh, information in January of 2022 on call signs. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, that was a very good set of sessions. Uh, we had a very popular recording that a lot of people have watched uh, from Jack Purdom on their on, and Jack and Al's project on the uh, T42, I think, is the model for their software-defined uh, transceiver that they were building. So we have a wide variety of activities uh, covered in our sessions over time, and you can just cruise through these and uh, watch them. We're not we're not real big on high production value, so we're not a YouTube. We don't have horns that we blow in the background. We don't uh, have an open bar. We don't have. Uh, well, we do have a logo. I guess we do have a logo and a mascot because we have uh, the, the the great mascot that Dan uh, devised of the rat for Rat Pack. So we do have a logo. Anthony, didn't you put a, did you put a an open bar in our uh, Kumo space? No, we we are we are a cafe lounge. Ah, so, uh, okay. Oh well. <laughs> yep. Now uh, we we recommend we're if you have if this is your first uh, year at the QSO Expo. You're going to want to make sure you visit the Como Lounge. Let me just go in there real quick and give a quick view of our lounge. I can do that. Yeah, Kumo, screen Kumo share here. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the screen share, and I got to jump up to the one on top of the screen here. So let's do that. And yeah, there we go. Asking, well, you're well, doing you're that. Anthony. Douglas was asking, asking about, about a good place to start, start CW from scratch. I think the Long Island. Island. Well, either one. Yeah. one CW Academy or the Long Island uh, CW Club. Either one of those is a great place to start. Maybe start right from, from you know, as a, as a, as a very first beginner and uh, bring you up to speed. So those are both great. Uh, yeah, I I highly recommend both of them because working with someone else doing CW is really the way to go, uh, you know, and I know it'd be nice if you could do it live with someone right next to you, but this is almost like being live. They they do a really good job, and you really will uh, get support from not only the teachers, but your fellow classmates. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a quick look at the Kumo space. And by the way, you'll all be able to do this over the next couple of days. Uh, when you're not attending a session somewhere, go to Kumo space. And when you go in there, there's a bunch of different rooms. Well, just go to the last one. That's the Rat Pack group. And when you go in there, when you walk in the door, you're going to get a little chance to watch the video that I showed a little earlier. We'll skip that and go by right now. But make sure you hit the gong when you come in so we know you're there. You can have a seat anywhere you'd like. I'm going to get out of this range of this uh, speaker here, so we'll do that. Sitting on the table, there's a number of things. We have the uh, Rat Pack uh, presentations list that I showed a little earlier that you can bring up. So we have that on the tablets. These little things look like iPads, and what they are is basically a way that we can give you a link to a website. And by the way, if I'm tilting my head way back, that's because I'm using my top monitor right now. This is another one on amateur radio charts and maps that I put together, just a little resource. So all of these are available um, for you to go out. One second, I need to get that, turn my nighttime blue off my screen before it gets to the point where it won't be recognizable. There we go. Okay. So you can travel around the room and you can use your mouse to move around or you can use your keep your uh, arrows to move. One nice thing is if you press the M key on your keyboard or you click on this little uh, shortcut thing over here, um, you will get a map of the room. So I'm going to press the M right now and it should jump me out and it gives me a map of the whole room so I can see everything that's in there. So let's go up here to the top part. Let's close that little window and I'm going to travel up here. And while we're here, what's... Let's pet the kitty. Oh, I forgot to get a drink. So let's stop back down here and get a cup of coffee. I got a cup of coffee now. I can sip it by clicking on it. I can gulp it even. Let's continue using our arrow key. And you see that we have some more coffee up here. We also have another pad for you. Uh, we have some pizza up here if you need a slice of pizza. Grab. And if you keep clicking on it, you get different choices. There's all cheese. Uh, here's veggie. 
uh, and pepperoni and sausage all available for you. Maybe want some iced tea or a mug of beer. We I think we do have we might have beer. That I'm not sure what that is. Or maybe you want some bubble tea. If you wander over here too close to the sound, you can groove along with Mickey there. Or you can come down and use the whiteboard and draw on the whiteboard. And our whiteboard wasn't working earlier. Let's see. Uh, it's still not working yet. Hopefully it'll start working by the time this starts. You can go over and pet the, the dog. Now, see, I'm too far away, so I got to get closer to the dog. And we also have some other things. There's a little uh, game arcade that you can play up here. So stop in the in the lounge. Besides all the funny things you can click on, we'll have uh, Rat Pack members in here, and you can talk to them. By the way, you notice the circle around you. Whenever you, something is within that circle, you start to hear it. And the closer you get, the louder it gets. So when you want to talk to someone, make sure you get close to them in the lounge. You can also find out who else is on Kumu Space by going down to the bottom and clicking on the people link. And it'll show you who's there and where they're at. If you see someone you're interested in talking to, you can click on the three dots and you can direct message them if you'd like and tell them, hey, meet me in such and such a room. Now, you're seeing a couple extra features because I'm in as an editor right now, but uh, most of these things are available to you also. Here's the chat window. And this is a great way uh, to increase the value of QSO Today uh, expo experience when you're not attending sessions stop into the different kumo lounges and talk talk to people chat have a good time you could turn your camera on and have the camera work i have a little icon for my picture right now and uh you can also broadcast the people in the room there's a gallery view where you can see everyone that's in the room and you notice there's my bubble tea and my cup there there's also little icons you can use to uh, clap uh, to show emotions thumbs up thumbs down etc cetera, etc cetera. You can also use this little pop-out tool to see the people that are there. So there's all sorts of little things. And again, let's get rid of the pop-up. When you're all done, you can exit by going back to the lobby. And that takes you back to the lobby and you can enter any of the other rooms. Uh, as the thing gets busy, you'll see the people showing up in the room. So there's one person in this room. Uh, there's four people in the AWRL space. Let's stop in and see them. So I came in the front door here. I have a, a backup generator. Uh, I mean, we learned it the hard way after the Maria hurricane in, in 17. And, uh, and see, when you move far enough away, you move out of the range so that you don't hear them anymore. And when people come in the door, you'll see people uh, show up on the screen there. Someone just came in. She might, maybe they're in our session. Are you in the session with me? Nope, maybe not. Okay. Hey. Hi, Bob. Anthony. Very good. You're live in the Rat Pack presentation. We're doing a demo I'm right muted. now. Oh, let me, let me unmute my microphone. I'm sorry. There we go. Hi, Anthony. How did uh, the presentation go? Well, we're still doing it. You're part of the presentation. We're, we're giving them a live tour so they know about the Kumu space so they can go out there and have fun after they're done with the session. So there might That's be a little awesome. bit of echo because we're doing multiple things here. That's yeah. awesome. It's and, great uh, to see everybody in here tonight. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, this is, I think this is the most fun part of the QSO Expo is going to the Kumu space. So make sure you guys try that out when you have time. Well, Bob, we're going to go ahead and head back to our presentation. So thank you. So that's the way you can jump around and chat with people. And the, the nice thing is even when the expo is not going on over the next couple of days, when there's no sessions running, that's a great time to go to Kumu space and meet up with people. So let me go back and get my mouse back down to this screen so I can stop my screen sharing. Dennis or or Dan, go ahead and take over, and I'll go ahead and get that uh, video queued up for the beginning of our next uh, playing of it. I'm just remembering as you were talking there about your comments about uh, and one of the cumul spaces you sit down and and talk food recipes with some. some folks. Yes, I, I I talked with the Begali the Begalis, and uh, the, her cousin was there from Switzerland, and we talked recipes uh, at the uh, March. Uh, QSO Expo after the, everyone else had left. So uh, there's a lot of things you can do in the expo besides attend the sessions. Okay, right now I'm waiting for this to load up. Let's go ahead and play our little short video again. Again, I apologize if the sound isn't the greatest. Um, let me go ahead and pause it for a second here and I'll get it full screen. Make sure the mic is all the way up. Yeah, go ahead, Dennis. I wanted to, to touch on a couple of comments in there that, um, that I saw the... Um, 
somebody was asking about the website for the Long Island uh, uh, CW Club. I think the easiest thing to do is just Google. Uh, I don't I don't know that you have the uh, website handy, but it's if you just Google Long Island CW Club, uh, you'll find them right away. They'll pop right up. So uh, that's a, that's an easy one to find. And Don was asking if the uh, Long Island CW Club teaches international words code. Yeah, I, I, I called it Continental Code. It's really the same thing. Continental Code and uh, international Morse code are the same the same thing basically. So just a different name. But I don't uh, think they have a class on it in particular. But if you're going to find someone that be willing to teach you, I'm sure you'll find someone there. That the group of people there is just uh, tremendous as a resource. So here, here's the website. Oh well, it's that Long Island. International Morse code. I mean, that's that's what we use, international or continental code. It's different. Yes. It's different as the American Morse code. That's the other ball. Yes, thank you. Uh, so it's Long Island CW Club, all one word, and uh, this is their their classes that are currently going on this month. So let me just bring this up real quick to show you. This is just one week of classes, and a lot of them are you'll see the intermediate sending CW tortoises. Uh, Morosino review, uh, beginner's carousel. That's what you're going to want to jump in. You're going to want to start the beginner's carousel and go through the different characters. There's also the sun, the the um, Monday night uh, tech group that meets at 8 p.m. Uh, they're on summer break right now, but it's the uh, radio and related technology. I'm uh, the joy of operating, and it was on summer break this week. It's now on again. And uh, they have satellite operations. They have uh, Elmer 101. So they have a wide variety of things. So go to this. Go to the website. Take a look at it. See if you're interested, and uh, get in con contact with them. As I said, there's over 3,100 members in the world now in the group. Uh, Anthony, I I just uh, made arrangements with Howard. Uh, I'm going to be speaking again on uh, the Long Island Morse CW Club here in November and talking about uh, getting started with amateur uh, microwave radio. So if anybody's interested in learning about microwave radio and uh, on amateur radio and working on those really short wavelengths, uh, I'm going to be doing a talk up there on their, on their uh, uh, Monday night. Uh, that's the radio and related technology. And there's also a video here on, on Rat Pack that I did uh, a while back that's on uh, introduction to uh, microwave communications. So, if you're interested in learning about that stuff, there's some, some good resources there for that as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play the short video here again. Uh, I'm If you did see it before, uh, sorry, but we want to get everyone a chance to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the play here. And I do, again, I do apologize for the sound not being that loud. I don't think your audio is working at all now. On the uh, uh, audio is not working at all now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do the audio myself here. So we'll we'll fix that. There's a very easy way for me to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it again. I will be the audio this time, and hopefully uh, that will allow everyone to hear it. Hello, welcome to the Rat Pack uh, Radio Amateur Training and Planning Activities Committee. To access all the resources in this presentation, you can go to tiny.cc slash ratpack2022, or you can scan the QR code. I'll give this at the end again so you can access it. During the 2020 COVID pandemic, Idaho Section Manager Dan Mahler, K7REX, saw a need for a program to foster continued activity of amateur radio operators during the COVID pandemic. Soon Rat Pack was born, including the cute mascot logo. Radio Amateur Training, Planning, and Activities Committee members 
Uh, planning committee members comprise amateur radio operators of a wide variety of backgrounds and experiences. We host nationwide twice a week amateur radio Zoom presentations. As of September 2022, we had over 225 sessions that have been presented. The vast majority of them are available for you to view as recordings. The topics are selected from audience recommendations and current trends in amateur radio. Wednesday sessions focus on general radio topics. Thursday sessions focus on emergency communication. To keep up with new and recorded sessions, discuss topics with other interested hams, etc., we have a number of tools, including group I.O. mailing list, online listings in the form of a spreadsheet, a website, Twitter, Facebook, and a YouTube channel. The group's I.O. mailing list consists of three. Please feel free to join one or all of these. It's a great place to find out about upcoming Rat Pack activities and also to discuss Rat Pack activities with other people. The spreadsheets are a great way to find all the upcoming sessions and all the previous sessions. They're available at tiny.cc slash Rat Pack dash list. The website, www.ratpack.us, is the place we can find all the resources and links to all the resources. Or visit us and follow us on Twitter at RatPackP, Facebook at RatPackFB, or scan the icon, I'm sorry, the QR code to follow us on Facebook. And we just added Facebook in the last month. We also have a YouTube channel at uh, YouTube slash C slash RatPack. The Zoom links to visit the upcoming presentations live are available on the website and in this presentation. Times are 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Currently, that's 100 Zulu, but that, will, of course, will be changing when our time changes. The, the Zulu time will change. The other times will stay the same. And again, here's this link, tiny.cc slash Rat Pack 2020, or scan the QR code, and that'll get you access to this presentation and all the links that are in it. Or visit our Rat Pack website at www.ratpack.us. Well, Dennis, there's more than one way to skin, skin the volume, and that's just the talk. It's weird talking when the screen is moving at a preset pace, though. So let me go ahead and stop our screen sharing. Again, anyone that might have any comments, questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll try and answer anything you might have. Yeah, that was... That was oh, the, let me answer one of the questions in chat here from Clifford. Um, the Kumo Space account. The Kumo Space will be available as one of the links on the website for the QSO Today Expo. On the top menu bar for the Expo, there will be a, a number of links, including the presentations, the vendor area, the slot, the slide present. I'm sorry, the, uh, the the bulletin board presentations, and the Kumo Space should all be available uh, by going to the QSO Today website. They don't should they don't call it space up there, though. They call it the lounges, I believe. Is yes. Let me let me bring let me bring up the um, the page. I think it should be open by now. Yeah, it's from the lobby. You can get to it from the lobby when you log in. I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong site here. This is not where I wanted to be. What did I, what, how did I end up going? Set countdown set. Oh, here, here to get the expo. There we go. Okay, so when you enter, when you log in, you're going to want to use the email that you got from the uh, registration. Well, they've already done that. They're here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's of course. That, that's true. They're already here. <laughs> And then you can watch the video. Uh, but to get to the Kumo space, it says Kumo Space Lounge. That's where you click to get there. And if you haven't looked at all the other options up here, the swag bag lets you go collect items at the various vendor sites. Uh, you can download handouts and things of that nature. Uh, you can also go to the exhibitor hall and view the, ex the, the people that are exhibiting. 
the project gallery is what I was talking about, the bulletin boards. It's basically like a uh, old fashioned um, poster board show and people might or might not be there, but either way you can go there and read or watch the information uh, that they have available in the form of PDFs. Some of them also have presentations. Some have uh, papers, PD, uh, QSOs, et cetera, et cetera. So don't miss that also. And again, remember, all the sessions are going to be recorded. They'll all be available for a month. But if you want to ask questions live, make sure you look at the schedule and figure out your times that you want to attend any of the upcoming sessions. And uh, so Clifford, you're great. That, that does it. The launch, then it's a great idea. Please, any questions you might have, comments, please feel free to type them in the chat. We'll be happy to try and answer them. It's very interesting. I notice everyone's time in the chat is 7 p.m. Yes, 4 p.m. Yeah. 7 p.m. Interesting. 7 p.m. Well, yeah. mine says 7 p.m., but I, it's actually uh, nine, It's actually 10, 16 here right now. We started yeah, at 9 p.m. They all say 4 p.m. here, which is okay. interesting. <laughs> so none of them are even close in time, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> Even this session will be recorded and available too. So if you're yeah. really if you're really glutton for punishment and you want to <laughs> see us again. Uh, if you have any requests, we'd be happy to play requests from our videos, or you can watch them on your own with full volume. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I know what we wanted to show them. Marty and I have been busy. I'm sorry, Dennis and I have been busy with a little project. There you go. And I almost forgot about it. We need yeah, to show them the project. Crazy. Give me a second here, and I'll get it up on the screen. This is a Rat Pack session that has not ran yet. This will be running in, the, in October. And let me just go to the slideshow and stop coughing. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get our screen share uh, back in place here. So this is going to be our upcoming session. Oh, let me just start back at the beginning here. This will be a three-part session starting in October, and it's called Beginner's Guide to, v to HF. It's a follow-up to the one we had on VHF and UHF. And basically, the three-week topics are going to break down this way. Uh, the first week is going to, we're going to discuss the HF bands operating and making contacts. The second week, we're going to discuss uh, equipment, uh, picking out equipment, getting equipment, uh, and antennas. And then the third week, we're going to put it all together, talking about installing things and tying everything together, interfacing, et cetera. So this will be a three-week session. And uh, Dennis, if you want to look up the exact date, I can't remember. I think we start October 14th. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Give me a minute. I, I, yeah. you know, I don't remember the date either, but uh, I'll, I'll look it up here. I know it's in October. Uh, it's a Wednesday in October. And there's Dennis in his station. Uh, and again, we always have a lot of things tucked into the presentation. So we want you to be able to get to the slide presentation. We'll post this presentation along with it. Um, and you'll be able to get to the slide. This isn't done. We're still working on it. But we're basically going to talk about the exotic contacts you can make with HF radio uh, that you can't do with VHF and UHF for the most part. And we're going to talk October about... October 12th. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. October 12th. You know, once you retire, one of the first skills to go away is calendar skills. So, uh, yeah, all you know is that every day is a Saturday. Yes. And there's no <laughs> holidays. Uh, so we're going to talk about what the VHF, what HF bands mean. We're going to give you some ideas of what pr privileges are available on each band uh, for different license classes. We're going to break the bands into three, into three groups. We're going to talk about traditional bands, 160, uh, 80, 80, et cetera. We're going to talk about work bands. We're going to talk about something called the post work bands. But then we're also going to talk about what type of operations you can do on what part of the bands based on rules, as opposed to what we do by gentleman agreement. We'll talk about different uh, allocations in different parts of the world. Um, we'll talk about uh, considered operator. Well, then we'll break down. We'll do a little talk about each of the various bands and different modes, do a little bit of band tour distance ranges uh this is a slide that i really like and we're going to talk about how each of the bands have a different personality and not only do they have a different personality but they can be in a different mood depending on the time of day season of the year point in the sunspot cycle etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, we'll talk about propagation we'll talk about uh 
how VHF is like archery and HF is more like fishing. If uh, we'll, we'll do that sports uh, metaphor. Uh, we'll talk about what privileges you get with different uh, licenses. And we'll talk about increasing your odds of making chip contacts, how you can increase your odds to make more contacts, tip for HF contacts. We'll talk a little bit about getting used to uh, making contacts with your radio. Um, this is a session I'm going to be doing tomorrow that we're going to refer to, uh, but I'm doing this tomorrow. This will be the first session of tomorrow's uh, uh, start of the day, and it's called Get, Get in the Rhythm, Know the Rhyme, and Dance the Dance. And we'll talk about ways that you can be effective at making contacts, especially on HF. We'll talk about spotting and propagation and contesting and different things, H activity awards. The second week, we're going to talk about uh, buying equipment, what's out there, uh, what you might want to consider, uh, why you would buy, pick something over something else. And we'll talk about what a typical setup would be like, how to connect your equipment, power supplies, antennas. We'll talk a little bit about base, some basic antennas and then a bunch of odd options you have out there. And we'll talk about sighting an antenna on your property or maybe when you're traveling remote. This was a field day a couple of years ago in West Virginia, and I did my planning before I got there using Google Maps. We'll talk about feed lines, uh, losses. We'll talk about SWR. And then the third week, we're going to tie everything together and talk about setting up your shack, interfacing things, uh, safety from lightning, grounding, uh, antennas for limited for um, stealth use and like H HOAs. Uh, we'll talk about computers, interfacing, uh, digital modes, a little bit of troubleshooting, and then a couple things to finish you up. So that's going to be a three-week session, and we'll be doing that over three different times. So uh, please look for that in October. If you already know all this stuff, consider uh, inviting a friend to come. This is a, just an advertisement at the end for my information. I do presentations on my own and i've done over 250 presentations since the beginning of covid so if your local radio club would like a presentation any of the topics that are on here just contact me via email and say anthony i'd like you to come and speak and i will do it via zoom or google meet or microsoft teams or however your club would like to do it or if you're close by you can even come in person and uh, if one of the topics doesn't meet your needs or if you want to blend the two just let me know you can get a sample of the slideshows and many of the, the presentations from this link. So let me go ahead and stop screen sharing prolific. again here. Say <laughs> so you're quite prolific, Anthony, and, and you don't know how to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I just booked something for November of 2023. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that with two different groups now for the next, for the next year. And doing uh, presentations, but but by all means, you know, if, if your clubs are are interested in uh, some of the stuff that, that's obviously the stuff that's on Rat Pack, take download the videos and play the videos. If you love. But please get in touch with us or the speakers that are there. I mean, there, yes, contact information is there. You get in touch with us. I know Anthony does this. I do the same thing. I I do a lot of uh, do a lot of talks at club meetings. It's real easy now with Zoom. I can talk to clubs all over the country. And we'll 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 all be on the lookout for good speakers at the at the QSO Today Expo. We're just yeah. here to to scalp uh, good speakers. For <laughs> yeah. And we have done that in the past, I will admit. But I was going to say, for me, Zoom has been great because I live in the middle of everywhere. Yeah, you know, I'm not in the middle of the desert here in California, and uh, we're like 100 and, oh, 150, 160 miles north of Los Angeles, and. And on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada is the nearest town is, uh, well, Ridgecrest is, is close by, but and that's a town of 30,000, but it's not, you know, it's like not right next door. It's a half an hour drive to get there. So being able to, to do Zoom sessions with clubs has been fantastic. And that's one of the things I've really enjoyed about Rat Pack is that it really gives us a, such a huge audience, uh, an international audience for that matter. We've had... Uh, and our international speakers, we've had speakers from, um, we had speaker from Spain talking, that was, um, I can't think of his name, uh, talking about Vara. He was the creator of Vara, if you're familiar with that. Uh, he came on uh, a couple of years ago and talked about the product. 
and we get folks uh, an international audience on on Rat Pack, just like here. I mean, it's wonderful that we can, we can speak with people all over the world. So really, now we have we have a committee that gets together every Tuesday evening, and none of us. Ever, most of us have not met each other in person. A few of us have met each other in person, but it's a community yeah. that gets together. We have people uh, in Massachusetts. But uh, I'm located in Ohio. We have uh, Oscar down there in uh, Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Uh, Barry down in uh, Florida. Florida. We have Arkansas. We have uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. We ha Idaho. Idaho. Ne Nevada. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we, we have a lot of people and if you're interested in being on the committee too, if you, if there's someone, if, you know, if this is something that really strikes you as something you like to be involved with, get in touch with Dan. We sometimes have openings for the committee and, uh, we're always looking for people again, if you want to speak, we'd be happy to consider having you as a speaker. If you want to make a suggestion as to other people or a topic, you know, please contact us and we'd be happy to uh, consider that. I have to share with you. I have to share with you a quick experience. I had a gentleman email me, says, how do I join your group? And I says, tell us, tell us a little about yourself. And he came, and he came back and says, disregard. <laughs> so uh, you're welcome to the group, but don't, it can't be bashful. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I may be one of the few, I, I know Dan's probably met a few of the folks here, but uh, on the committee, but I know I've met I've met uh, Marty and and Michelle. Of course, I've known both of them for many many years. And uh, Michelle uh, Michelle is part of our committee because of an uh, email I sent to Dan, and then she, she told Dan, that, "Oh, well, you ought to get Dennis to join too." <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. So it's all her fault. <laughs> well, I guess I'm my fault for recommending her in the first place, but. Michelle's great, and I think she's, uh, I think she was moderating. I, she was going to stop by here when they were done. She's moderator on a, on the, one of the other Friday night uh, live sessions. Yes. Maybe yeah. up in the open, uh, open system, the, whatever, the Open System Institute, OSI, uh, Google Space. Yeah, so the, yeah, that's another place to drop in and at the open, at the open uh, resource page on the uh, Kumo oh. Space. Was o o OSI open source? Yes, which is what she what it's called. Yeah, she's uh, one of the founders of that. It's a quite a great organization. Done a lot of good, fun stuff. Any other questions from anyone? Comments from the? Please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll wind this up here in a few minutes. But we'd love to have you uh, attend our or stop by the Kumo space and discuss with it and attend our uh, upcoming Rat Pack sessions that will be on Wednesdays and Thursdays, <coughs> excuse me, coming up. And again, let me just put up the schedule here real quick for the re for the ones that are coming up very soon. So starting uh, next week, we're going to be having uh, a session I'm really looking forward to. It was just an article in QST two months ago about VAR AC and HF FM uh, digital chat uh, mode. Uh, so it's a it's a live keyboard mode as opposed to a messaging mode, uh, using the same sort of technology used for for VAR uh, in Winlink. So VAR. that's going to be yes. Um, <laughs> we're going to be doing another uh, set. Uh, Commonly used forms, Barry and Diana, two of our committee members are going to be doing that. That's coming up next Thursday. We're going to have next, the week after that, high altitude balloons. Uh, we're going to have a session discussing whether there should be return to Navy Mars. Uh, that's coming up. And then on October 12th, Dennis and I will be kicking off our first week of our beginner's guide to HF. Uh, Winter Field Day has new management this year. And uh, mm -hmm. Marvin Turner and possibly some of the other committee members will be there to discuss winter field day. It's never too soon because winter is coming. And uh, again, we'll have the second and third week of our HF. Uh, there'll also be a session on digital voice, uh, HF codecs and free di digital voice system. Uh, we're going to have two sessions on summits on the air. Uh, on the 9th of October, Bob Witt K0NR is going to concentrate on VHF. UHF activations of soda. And then on the 23rd, Scott Hanley, WA9STI, is going to do one focused on HF 
uh, activations of summits. And then we're going to have a packet in the 21st century from Brian Pasternak uh, in November. So uh, yeah. you notice there's a few dates we haven't filled in here yet, but there's a number of dates coming up. And again, if you scroll down the list, you can see the sessions that we had recently. Uh, we just had Andy's Ham a Linux Distribution by Andy Stewart. That was a very good one. And Oliver Dooley was uh, K6OLI, uh, did one on the Great California Shakeout. And again, uh, we do a wide variety. We had a search for Amelia Earhart using her last that's, radio transmissions. That's really a fascinating talk. Anybody who is interested in, in Rod's talk was just amazing. I am so glad we had it. That was really a great session. And if you want to go back and actually listen to the full, unchoppy, full volume sessions of Beginner's Night in VHF, UHF, both weeks one, two, and three are all available on YouTube. And you can watch those very easily by going to the link. So that's it for me. Let's see if uh, Dennis or Dan has any closing thoughts here before we all head off to the to our... Lounge area. Yes. I wish I wish that I, I mean, had to talk to the guy. You're cutting out, Dennis. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I was just I need to I'd like to find out if there's a a way to find out how many people we have uh, on the uh, chat, how many how many we have in attendance because there's there's no indication. Uh <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh uh, yes, the, there could be three of you out there. There could be, yeah, there could be three hundred. We have no idea. <laughs> Everyone raise their hand. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, well, you know, William, uh, you're, you're, Anthony's asking for closing thoughts. I think one of the cool things about this is we have fun, and as a group, as our committee, I, I think everybody, everybody in the committee, we all, we all really get along together really well. We come from very, very different backgrounds. Uh, but we all seem to blend together so well, and we just have a lot of fun doing this stuff. And yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> there. Clifford raised his hand. Thanks, Clifford. <laughs> uh, I think and, that's what I think that's why we have to have the uh, the April uh, April <laughs> Fools uh, session to blow off the steam that we we accumulate through yeah. the year. And playing, this playing <laughs> serious things. Yeah, this is this is yeah. We do so much serious stuff with the with the third the Wednesdays and Thursdays. The Tuesdays, I think we get a chance to blow off steam occasionally, but but uh, we have so much fun. It's such a great group of great group of guys and gals that uh, all over the country. My uh, ad, that did not that is not accidental. Uh, over time, since I started Rat Pack some time ago, almost two years ago, uh, I had several people on this committee. Some that just didn't fit in. Um, they were, they were. Um, our our mission is moving amateur radio ahead in a positive manner, uh, presenting it and so forth. And there were some people joining our group that had other ideas in mind, and it didn't quite fit in. And so over time, we had to mix and match, and we have the team we have now. And if you think if you want to have a lot of fun, and work with some very talented people. We've got professors at, at universities. We've got CEOs of companies. We've got all kinds of people in our group. They're very, they're very talented. Uh, we've got FEMA people in there. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a lot of people. And if you think, think that you uh, like to join a fun group uh, and uh, and have you know anything to participate with, you know what, what are your what is your passion? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'd like to hear from you. I also yeah. noticed. I also noticed that Angel, uh, Angel, WN two Y W L. She wanted us to to get that uh, URL for the Long Island uh, CW group to back to her before we leave. Yeah, well, somebody some, did post that. Someone did post uh, it. Yeah, somebody did post it on there. That's uh, what I got to figure out before I do my next session is how to put stuff in the chat. There's no way to, I don't. I haven't found any way to do that from here. I, I think I need. I think I need to be logged in as a, a guest, also, as a this into a. Uh, <laughs> so, so you just clicked on uh, on a one of the chat uh, somebody's chat and it popped up on your screen there. Anthony. Yes, I know. I did. I did. I I did the show <laughs> button and it popped up. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, well, there you go. So you can, if you do that, how about if we do that. 
Come on. Yeah, but it doesn't let me send any chats. Uh, yeah. I was trying to get this to this should show up in We'll be the guinea, we're the guinea pigs so that they can actually have the have the real the real presentation starting tomorrow morning. I think it was. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there it is. The link's up there right now. Long Island CW Club dot org. There was a comment up here about uh, and I. I <laughs> uh, it's it's scrolled off now. I can't get to it. It's disappeared. But. But one of the first comments up there was, a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, I would attest to the fact that it's a joy being first. <laughs> um, Anthony, were you, were you a speaker on the first few so today? Yes, I've done, I've done two sessions. Well, I, th I think I did three sessions the first time. I've done at least two sessions every, every one of the five. Uh, last year in the spring, my wife Linda K eight ODP and I co-presented together uh, amateur radio and trains. Uh, yeah. so we did that and, uh, I forget all the ones I've done. I, I know I did the, uh, choosing your ideal call sign. I yes. did one on uh, WA seven BNM contest calendar and 3830 website. Um, I did the one on trains. I probably did. I'm not sure what else I did, but I've I did done the, one every, I did the first one EME on 40 meters. Yeah. That was, that was a gas. Um, EME being moon bounce. And I'm trying to remember what the last, what was the last, oh yeah, it was the last one I did was, um, it was, it wasn't last time, it was the time before, I believe. I didn't do anything last time. But it was the um, rescuing the Voice of America, uh, the Collins uh, 821A1 transmitter from the Voice of America here in California. A 50,000 pound shortwave broadcast transmitter that was going to be sent to the uh, landfill. And uh, as a member of the Collins Collectors Association and being a big fan of Collins Radio, uh, you can't see him, but I've got a stack of Collins Radio sitting here right next to me. <laughs> you can't see him. But but um, we actually got permission to uh, remove one of the transmitters from the site, and it's now on display at the um, uh, Antique Wireless Association Museum in Bloomfield, New York. And uh, they've got it. It was able to uh, transfer the... Uh, I guess you'd call it ownership to them from the Voice of America, but a bunch of us from the Collins Collectors Association went out there and tore the thing apart, loaded it onto a couple of big tractor trailer rigs and sent it off to New York. That came from out here in California in the Central Valley. That was a fun project, and we highlighted that on a, it's actually been here on draft as well, but I had a blast doing that for um, for uh, uh, QSO Today. Uh, I think it was the third session they did that eric had and of course you've been on the you've been on the blog too this web the the web yes the yeah likewise so um, i'm looking the reason why i'm looking up like that my eyes keep going up in there is i'm looking at the uh, third monitor above my head and there's now 20 people in kumo space so we'll oh, bring this go. we'll bring this hey. to an end and we'll head over to All kumo right. space they're not in our booth there's 20 people oh. there but oh, okay i was gonna say if there's 20 people no. in our booth we're not gonna be able to get in because it only no. goes Yes. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Hope to see uh, you on an upcoming Wednesday or Thursday. And I know some people can't make it on Wednesdays and Thursdays because they're tied up. So hope to, that you join us on YouTube and watch our videos there or on Vimeo. And please, uh, no matter how you watch our videos, consider joining the mailing list and chatting with other members on the mailing list. Definitely join the mailing list, sir. That's well worthwhile. So we'll now turn it over to our chief rat. Uh, Mr. Dan, would you like to make some closing comments? Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I see people out there I know, and I see some new new people that's uh, listening to us tonight. Hopefully we'll see you in uh, either and or Wednesdays or Thursdays uh, Zoom sessions. Um, our Zoom account allows us to have as many as 500 participants in there. And we have exceeded that. Uh, after the, after the uh, pandemic uh, started settling down, people started uh, wanting it more on, on YouTube and things of that nature. Uh, so it's, it's still going strong. Uh, still, still we, our, our, our audience varies from 
I don't know, 50 to 150, 300 people, depends upon the topic, to join us and, uh, uh, and participate and let us know what you'd like to hear. You know, and one thing I didn't show them, Dan, when I was doing the short clips, that every clip has question and answer at the end of it. So we always encourage the audience to ask the presenters questions. And uh, most of the time, our presenters are very gracious to hang around as long as it takes. So uh, that's the good thing about coming live on Wednesdays and Thursdays. You do get to ask questions. Yeah, that's that's why you want to be there on the live sessions is to be able to participate in the Q&A. That's, uh, that's a high point. Okay, well, everyone, 73? 73, everybody. Enjoy the expo. It's going to be a fun-filled weekend. I'm going to go ahead and hit the end stream button now. Good night. Good night, everybody.